All right, friends and family, it is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with your Wednesday real life stock review. We had some selling today with some Federal Reserve news. And the really big warning signal, in my opinion, was absolutely the takeout of this candle. This was, of course, Monday. A lot of bulls out there in the market. Everything looked amazing. And the warning signal was, hey, guys, don't think we should. But if we close below this candle, I mean, why would that not be bearish, right? Really good volume, nice bounce, possible flag, off of old resistance, new support. The fact that we closed below that level immediately, like not weeks from now, the next day. With increasing volume, certainly, in my opinion, was bearish. So, as I mentioned in the afternoon rooms, I did get into some short positions on the Qs and long positions on the SQQQ. Had a pretty strong drop today. And, you know, the big question, of course, is will the 100 hold again? And I think the answer is yes, it most likely will. It probably will, but it doesn't have to, right? You could keep some negative exposure out there in the markets, right? Maybe some short shares of the Qs or long shares of SQQQ or some bear call spreads or just a little bit of negative Delta just in case we don't hold. But keep in mind, we can. We've held before. It can easily happen again. So just be cognizant of that and uh, maybe play some straddles or strangles. But with the SPY as high as it is and really getting kind of torn to bits, I'm going to be tiptoeing towards the more bearish perspective than bullish perspective right now. I'm going to be playing short-term trades on the downside. I'll be getting in and setting up a lot of bear positions today. I do travel internationally tomorrow and, you know, just take advantage of a quick little drop. It doesn't have to be anything huge or monumental. I think we can absolutely get a retest tomorrow. And I think that retest will be the opportunity to get into some bearish positions. The risk reward's good, right? Your stops are essentially here. And on a retest, we get in short with puts or short shares or whatever you were playing and uh, look to exit down here somewhere. I think that's going to be overall the plan from here. All right, here's some stocks that were requested by you. Apple dropped like a stone today. You actually made a new all-time high yesterday by six pennies and then we sold off all day today. Here is the three-minute chart. And really, none of this was here until the Fed decision Right, That was when all the opportunity to make the money came in today, truly on the markets, was this breakdown. I mean, this is your three-minute chart, and it was clean, easy, and simple. Once this came out, right at that 2 o'clock hour, boom town. Bull candle, short below there, short below there, short below there, short below there. If you were trading from 2 Eastern until, I don't know, close of market, you dominated. And congratulations, you did extremely, extremely well. Literally, whatever you got into, you probably made money on it. MRK, American company. Well, let me give Apple a little bit more information. So Apple, um, on a big swing trade perspective, we hit the 20, right? That's that's interesting news. Can we go lower from there? Sure. Can we go higher from there? Sure. But my overall perspective on Apple at this point, we probably bounce a little bit tomorrow, get a little bit of a rest, and then slowly peel back into like 168. Apple needs to pull back anyway. Love the company long term, obviously, but uh, it's high. So MRK on the daily, we did end bullish, which is a lot of strength. Be keeping an eye out for anything, really, that ended up bullishly today. With the close of the 100 and 200 simple moving average, I could see a little bit of a retest like this possible on MRK, a little bit of a double bottom type of flavor right there. This is your weekly chart. And the weekly chart, again, bouncing off of some of the long-term moving averages. So in general, I mean, it's more bullish than bearish. This is a huge, major pharmaceutical company, pretty blue chip. A lot of money is going from poo stocks to blue stocks, as I talked about on Tuesday in the afternoon room. That is, of course, going from high growth, really large, high price to sales into more blue chip and MRK, American company, definitely more of a blue chip standard uh, longer term play and value company more than a growth. Boeing. So Boeing was down a little but not tons today. It actually did gap up nicely. The challenge with Boeing is it's stuck. It's stuck between these long term moving averages on multiple time frames. So here's the monthly. Smashing its head against that on a monthly chart as a resistance. Here's your weekly. 
That's acting as a little bit of a support, and this is acting as resistance, and here's the daily. I mean, we are really, really sideways. The best way, in my opinion, to play bowling right now, A, day trade it, B, non-directional option trading. So iron condors, bull put spreads, bear call spreads, some type of option selling premium and taking advantage of just the sideways chop fest or actively day trading bowling, probably the best way to play it from here. All right, next, let's check out upstart holding UPST. Well, uh, it's going lower. So you had the gap down on earnings that just got absolutely buccaneered. I mean, squash buckled and huge bullish volume right at the 100. There is no reason for it to take out that low. So far, we didn't, right? There's three days in a row of sideways action. And then there it is. There's the close. If you're using the 100 as a saving grace and a savior, that's good for you. There's your last ditch effort. This is it. This is like the... If this thing breaks down, it's toast. And there it is. Two days later, it broke. And that's that's obviously the trend. This trend is crumbling. So upstart, uh, f- going to fill this gap. There it is. Gap is filled. And just let it slowly keep trading lower. Short the rips. I think it could easily go into 82. There's a lot of stocks in full bear mode right now. AMD, not on full bear mode by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, my mentorship group and myself are doing a lot of wave counts on this one re- recently. And we think that this is some type of nice wave structure like this. This is a really pretty ABC corrective wave. I think we could eventually pull down to the 100. Pretty bullish on AMD longer term. And we did get a decent close today on AMD. Again, this huge bear candle really came in towards the end of the day. This purple line is the 50 EMA on the daily chart. And you can see that most of the action happened really towards the end of the day. I did take a bullish day trade on AMD today right here and got stopped out for a one hour loss. And that was a good thing. I'm glad I got stopped out. Wish I shorted, did not, didn't get that R back on AMD today, maybe tomorrow. But the daily chart, yeah, let it pull back a little bit. I'm keeping an eye out for maybe some debit spreads or some put sales. I'd have no issue buying some shares of AMD around 100 again. It was down there just recently. So I might look to take advantage of some of the volatility and just essentially get paid to be patient. But right now, yeah, it looks a little a little silly tomorrow, expecting some retesting for sure out in the market. Uh, either you know a huge gap down in the market and a trade higher or an, a, an open flat or retest, and then we'll see what happens on Friday and or next week. But yeah, there's a smidge bit of weakness out there in general. Ford, not really that weak though. Here's the weekly chart, and Ford is just absolutely cruising. Not even close to all-time highs of the tech bubble of 2000, but it is slowly recovering Ford going to do pretty well with EV sales and F-150 sales that we can be assured of, but this one finally, and I do mean finally broke out of that massive, massive trading range, really good gap. Overall trend is bullish. If you got a chance to watch the advanced trading class that Robert Falco did in December, he murdered this wave count, clearly calling this a wave four and let this one continue higher and uh, he nailed that one really, really well. A lot of people made some good money on Ford. Buy this dip if you want. Trend is bullish. This is a company that you could, I would assume, slowly ride this trend higher. I don't personally have any position on Ford and don't plan on it, but if you want to uh, snag some bits on the retest, that would make the most sense to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be back on Monday with your next talk review. I do plan on doing them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday being your trade reviews. I might be able to sneak one in um, while I'm on the island, but I am traveling internationally, leaving tomorrow morning, flying down to, once again, Buck Island in the British Virgin Islands, the private island that I hope many of you would love to join me at March the 6th through the 10th for our trader summit down there. But either way, really thrilled and amped about all the progress and all the growth that you guys are having. Continue to keep it up. And I will see you later. Until next time, love life, love life, and trade. Bye. 